Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC is here. And I'm here to answer those burning questions of, is it good? Is it worth the wait? Is it far more challenging than the original game? Let's find that out. Welcome to this review, you guys. I hope you enjoy. And I wanna give a big special thank you to The Outer Haven for giving me this opportunity to review the DLC. Full transparency, I am not done, but I'm happy to report. I'm about 40 hours in and still going. And I feel that's the best news to report to you guys because that just tells you how much content is here and how much there is to do. I've fought a lot of bosses, a lot of other different enemies, and I'm still seeing more as we speak. So with that said, let's get into this review in progress. So if you're familiar with From Software and how they handle their DLC expansions, you know by now that they typically step it up a notch when it comes to challenge. And that tradition definitely continues here. Not only do the bosses and the enemies pose a significant challenge a lot of the time, but the traversal and navigating this world, I feel, has really took it up a notch in terms of challenge and just trying to figure out where to go next. And I quickly realized that I have to do a lot of paying attention when it comes to my surroundings, when it comes to the NPCs and listening to what they're saying. All of it was very important to me progressing through this DLC. And that's interesting to me because during the main game, there were NPCs that I missed, NPCs that I half paid attention to or didn't feel it, it was necessary to get through the game. But here I am in the DLC feeling the opposite where I'm dependent on the NPCs and I'm dependent on what's around me and what's telling me what to do. So I found that a very good thing. And if you're looking for that, if you're looking for more characters to get interested in, more NPCs to get involved with, you're definitely gonna find that in Shadow of the Erd Tree. Because beyond the difficult bosses and beyond the difficult enemies, the traversal and knowing where to go, I felt was the hardest enemy of all. I must have asked myself a million times, where do I go? How do I get up there? How do I get down there? How do I get way over there? I was constantly asking myself those questions and I firmly believe you will be doing the same. The Land of Shadow is very vertical and it's a lot of layers. That's the best way I can describe it. There's top layers, bottom layers, middle layers, and what seems like it'd be easy to get to, you'll quickly find out it's not that easy easy. So there's a lot of exploring to be had. There could be some frustration to be had as well. But trust me, when you do find the pathway, when you do find where to go and you're rewarded for it, it is so worth it. Just like the Elden Ring main game, it's so rewarding to explore and to navigate in different ways and think outside the box and then use Torrent, your horse, in the process as well. And what I found most expanded and evolved is the use of Torrent. From Software has implemented some new and expanded ways to use Torrent to our benefit when it comes to the platforming and when it comes to the traversing. And I found that very awesome. I felt like I was relying on Torrent a bit more to get me out of situations as well as figure out where the heck am I going? So you can expect to use Torrent a lot in this DLC. And in my experience, I felt I really relied on Torrent and used Torrent more often than I did in the main game. When it comes to the environments and the areas in this map, they're gorgeous, very diverse. Of course, we know From Software specializes in this. The color palettes are different, the music is different, the enemies are different, and each area has its own kind of theme as we're normally used to. And that goes hand in hand with the bosses going along with them. And the bosses I felt were posing challenges that were very diverse as well. Some bosses took me one try to beat, while others took me multiple tries. So there's a good diversity in those challenges and then it had me tweaking my build a little bit to meet those challenges, which to me was a good thing. That told me that the bosses were giving me some trouble and I needed to adjust my playstyle. I needed to adjust my build in order to learn how to fight these bosses and I felt that was 
a good thing. The bosses themselves have really cool, unique designs. From software, we know they get down when it comes to bosses, and I feel like they did not disappoint in this DLC so far. I have fought more than a handful of main bosses, mini bosses, NPC invaders, and I have had a great grasp of the boss fights in this game, and I feel like they do meet those expectations, especially if you're looking for more challenge, more unique designs. Music, of course, is very important. They did not disappoint me in this DLC. Speaking of music, the music is awesome, especially when it comes to certain areas. It's very eerie, it's very dark, desolate sounding, and it can feel empty, but then when enemies approach and they're in the vicinity, the music picks up a bit and it gets a little more tense. And that's what I love about Souls games, and I think that's what they're most known for when it comes to their environments and how you navigate and how you get around. It can feel dreadful to know what's around the corner, but you can't help but want to look anyways. And that's exactly the feeling I had with this DLC. I was creeping around, I was taking my time, I was afraid for what's around the corner, but I still crept and went anyways because I had to know what was there. The music in this game, I think, really taps into that feeling and adds more to it to make you feel even more dreadful of what's to come next. There's actually some jump scares that happened to me too, which was awesome. <laughs> that scared feeling that we have is part of the experience, and I just feel like this DLC really captured that for me. And so if you're looking for that same experience and you appreciate that feeling, you're definitely going to get it here. And as I was creeping around and fearful what's around the corner, I was often met with enemies that came very well prepared. Some were new, and then some were a bit familiar, but with a twist this time, whether it was magic or some kind of gimmick that they learned from somebody else, it's very easy to see that they are very inspired to kick my butt. So that happened a lot. I did die a lot, and you could probably expect to do the same. The enemies, of course, like I said, very diverse with each different area and they were not messing around, I'll just say that. <laughs> and they were not messing around. There's also some really cool new weapons and gear. Some of them I really want to use, so I've actually been leveling up my character to use them. That's a good sign. Typically, I stick with one boring weapon and I'll just go through the game like that, which is probably what you're gonna see in this footage. And that's just how I play, but this DLC had me finding weapons that I actually want to try and I actually wanna give a go. So that was refreshing. As far as new level up systems or something to help your character, that's actually in this DLC too. There's two different types of fragments that you can collect along your journey that are going to level you up in different ways. There are two types of fragments that you're going to collect. One is the Skadu Tree fragment, which will increase your damage negation as well as your attack power. And then there's the Revered Spirit Ashes that do the same, but they do that to the Spirit Ashes instead. What's interesting about about these new stats is that you're not going to be able to actually see the stats increase on your stats page. Rather, you're only really going to notice them in their performance while you're in battle encounters. So when you're fighting enemies, you're fighting bosses, then you're going to truly know how powerful you feel. Both of these stats are going to help us be better equipped for navigating this new world and just progressing through the DLC. Because as I before mentioned, you're not going to want to take these enemies lightly. They might look cute or harmless, but trust me, they're not. So finding these fragments help piece together the story as well as kind of adding pieces to your character to make them more powerful. So they're very important to find and it also clues you in on where to go next. All in all, I felt these additions were welcomed. I didn't think they were totally necessary, but it does give that extra incentive to want to explore and find more of them and give that satisfying feeling of finding something new. Shadow of the Erd Tree has really been satisfying of an experience, I gotta say. I was waiting and anticipating for this DLC. I was very much looking forward to it, and I feel it has not disappointed. It's not perfect, as I do feel some pathways are very easy to miss, and it can lead to frustration. I also feel some of the design in the map feeling so frustrating to get to can be an issue. But other than that, I don't have much to complain about with this DLC. I love the music. I like the boss fights. Some of them, they're okay, but others, great. 
amazing bosses. And when it comes to the enemies and their newfound abilities, as well as new enemies altogether, I was very happy with those. I'm happy with the overall experience. I think everybody should play it, especially if you're a big time Elden Ring fan. There's really no excuse. It's more Elden Ring. So what's not to love? <laughs> Over 40 hours and I'm not done yet. It's insane. So I hope you enjoyed this review or review in progress, we should say, because I want to keep it transparent. I am not done with this DLC, all right? I put my stats at the beginning. I hope you guys enjoy the DLC. Let me know what you think about it once you get your hands on it. And if this review helped you get more hype, definitely let me know in the comment section as well. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.